Hello, 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 hello. Hello and welcome to Santa Anita Live, Road to the Derby. Dan Torgman here with America's Best Racing and my good friends, Ren Carruthers and Matt Bernier. This is the first of a three-part streaming video series from America's Best Racing and Santa Anita. Uh, we're live today for the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. We come back on March 6th for the San Felipe Stakes. And then on April 3rd, the big one, the Santa Anita Derby, all points races for the Kentucky Derby. We're super pumped to be here. Um, Ren, it's been a little while. For those yeah. who since we last saw you, you became a handicapper, an yeah. analyst at Tampa Bay Downs. You're, you're, you're just making all sorts of moves. I'm glad you carved in some time for us today. Oh, well, no, thank you so much. No, I, I love it. It's been a lot of fun. I got to look smart today because I had a first-time starter win at a big price, so I always love that. Um, but no, it's just fun. I, I, I love uh, sharing the, the uh, paramutual love. For those who don't know, uh, Ren is a person who is known as the Peda Geek. And right. the reason for that is because you are a master of pedigree. You've been following so many of these two-year-old horses as yeah. they've, they've, they've gotten to the track, run their first races. And now now we, we sort of reap the benefits, right? Because now they're three-year-olds. Now, now they're on the derby trail. And you've been scouting these horses out for months. So we're going to get to the Robert B. Lewis uh, field here in a bit. And Ren's going to have some insights there. And the last race of the day at Santa Anita, a uh, bunch of young horses, maidens, nice, nice cow bred maiden field in the last. I also want to welcome in our good friend, Matt Bernier. You know him from NBC Sports and from the Matt Bernier Show, his amazing podcast. Matt, how you been? And horse players and horse players. And horse players. It feels like a million years ago, horse players. Unfortunately, <laughs> time flies. No, everything's going very well. Good to be with you guys again. Feels like it's been an eternity. It's only, uh, when was the last time we got together? Was it the Travers or the Derby? It was actually, it must have been the Derby, I think, yeah. right? Didn't we do a show after? Didn't we do the Preakness together? Uh, did we do the Preakness? We did. I've been doing more important things. Weren't you like, you were doing more important things? Oh, you, you were on you site. I don't remember where I was. <laughs> That's, uh, I this remember is, watching the look, previous with Dan Forgeman because I was like, "Oh my gosh, Swiss Sky Diver, what is going on?" Oh, I was in, I was at Keeneland. That's oh, right. okay. I, I was at Keeneland, but yeah, it's it, it feels like you know everything just kind of blends together in the the world and the era of COVID. You know, it yeah. seems like just months and dates and all sorts of different things. They all just kind of blend together. But thankfully, we've kind of hopefully you know the calendar's turned over to twenty one, and now. This is one of my favorite things about horse racing in general. We kind of have, I feel like, six-month increments where the lead-in to the Kentucky Derby is fantastic. And then once the Derby's over, then we start looking forward toward the Breeders' Cup. And, you, you know, you just kind of break that racing season, or at least I do anyway, the calendar into two six-month segments, the lead-in to the Derby and the lead-in to the Breeders' Cup and all the great racing in between. So it's nice to be on the road to Louisville, hopefully knock on wood the first Saturday in May. I look at the same way. Although although I do look at uh, Saratoga as being the festival in between it all. Yes. <laughs> so um, right now, um, they're loading into the gate for the sixth race, which is the race before the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. Uh, we actually have added manpower on site at Santa Anita. Our good friend George Ortuzar is going to be joining us here momentarily live from Santa Anita. He told us that he spoke to Doug O'Neill this morning. He spoke to Bob Baffert this morning. And that right there represents half of the field Isn't for the crazy, Robert yeah. Lewis Stakes. So we've uh, had some scratches. What's that? We've had some scratches. We I have was... had some scratches. You want to go through them? Well, I'm just glad that you kept it together, Dan, because I know <laughs> I know how uh, attached you've become over these past couple of months to Ron Bauer. So, uh, but he scratched, uh, and he's now going to be headed toward toward. The, uh, Are you asking me? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was going to have you fill in the blank because I think we got word of where he's actually pointing to scratching out of out of the Robert B. Lewis and pointing toward the El Camino Real, correct? Yep, El Camino Real. Real. That, that's what we heard, yeah. I didn't want to say the words because I was, at the time that came through, as you know, I was... Oh, I was just, yes. Okay, was, no was, worries. And then we also heard a lot of stuff. Wasperance is also scratched. That is the <laughs> son of Life is Sweet. Uh, so he is out as well. So, again, we're scratched down to a six-horse field, but as we get into the race, I think we're going to find it's still pretty competitive for a six-horse race. I know amongst ourselves alone, we have a couple of different opinions. Um, obviously, the horse down on the rail, we expect Medina Spirit to be the favorite in this race. Uh, a little teaser, Giorgio is a big fan, and he's going to give us uh, the word from Baffert. Uh, you know, which, which one does, does Baffert feel better about today? Is it Medina Spirit? 
or is it the horse uh, on the far end of the gate, um, Spielberg, uh, who's also got in this spot? And of course, when we talk Doug, Doug O'Neill, we talk Hot Rod Charlie, um, who finished second in the Breeders' Cup at 94 to 1. And Doug O'Neill, of course, has some history in this race in particular with a uh, later later on uh, Derby winner, and I'll have another. And why don't we go ahead and do a little backtrack to the 2012 Robert B. Lewis Stakes. I'll have another now comes looking for the lead. I'll have another takes on, isn't he clever at the rail? Right behind them, grooving solo. Liaison now struggling. Liaison's dropping back and to try to find somewhere else to run. Rousing Sermon and Empire away. They come for home and I'll have another kicks away. I'll have another opening up to lead by three. Oh, losing the rider here was Liaison. Liaison got squeezed between horses and lost the rider. But it is I'll have another coming home to win it easy. I'll have another, and Mario Gutierrez win it by almost three. Empire Way was second, then Groove and Solo and Rousing Sermon. That was, uh, I'll have another in crystal clear HD in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is actually him right here, over yeah. my shoulder. This was, uh, that was actually the race that kind of turned me on to him in uh, early on in that three-year-old campaign, and, and you'll remember and believe the Santa Anita Derby, he had a a uh, great duel with Creative Cause. He ended up winning that race, went on to win the Derby, and then uh, that unbelievable stretch run in the Preakness with Bodie Meister. Just uh, all around, the, the that sort of trio of races for me, and obviously including the, the Robert B. Lewis, that would have been the fourth race of them all. But um, I, this was, and I think it goes to show, that you never know when you're going to see who could be the next big thing. And who's to say we don't see that here this afternoon? I know there's a great race down in Florida just about an hour and a half ago with greatest honor for Suge getting the job done in the Holy Bull. But who's to say we don't have a proper derby prospect coming out of this race this afternoon? California Chrome did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ren, did you ever, were you ever on the I'll Have Another You know one of my good friends, right? Uh, Kevin McFarland. Mm -hmm. We had seen Kevin during, uh, uh, I forget where we were, but he, this was well before the derby. He was so hyped up on I'll Have Another. I remember every toast he made that night, the toast was to, I'll have another, I'll have another over and over and over again. And then sure enough, when the horse won, you can imagine how much he cashed in. So yeah, I mean, through him, yes, I was on the all I have another train, but I can't take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fair. At least you were part of that experience. You experienced some joy yeah. throughout that run. Um, as we mentioned, Hot Rod Charlie, of course, is, uh, is Doug's uh, big hope for uh, – at this moment, um, at least on the Derby Trail, he's also got wiped the slate in the Robert B. Lewis. Uh, so the four horse Hot Rod Charlie and the seven wiped the slate. When it comes to Hot Rod Charlie, we referenced that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Um, we also have a little flashback there. Want to take a look at what Hot Rod Charlie did, and then on the other side of it, we're going to kick it to George because we want to hear what Doug O'Neill has to say about how the horse is coming into this race. Hot Rod Charlie circles up on the outside. The two of them will turn for home together, and Essential Quality is trying to get them. Here's Hot Rod Charlie, a huge long shot at 94 to 1, coming into the final 16th. But Essential Quality runs by. Jackie's Warriors given way. Essential Quality's going to do it. Essential Quality has won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile over long shot Hot Rod Charlie. Yeah, I didn't have them on my tickets. Did you? <laughs> no. No, but here, here's the thing. Like, real quick before we get to George, I just want to say, you know, tr uh, complete transparency. This is going to be my pick today for the Robert B. Lewis. I love a horse who, who, who can show up like that, and he has that type of pedigree that's going to get better as he's maturing. He is by Oxbow. Uh, we know how well Oxbow did uh, on the – I mean, did, won, didn't win the Derby, but Oxbow um, – obviously did well on the Triple Crown Trail as a whole. I mean, he won the Preakness and then he was second in the Belmont Stakes. But beyond that, Oxbow himself, by awesome again, won the Breeders' Cup Classic. So that's, you know, in your mind. But also Oxbow's out of a full sister to Tiz now. So you're still thinking distance. And then the bottom side, he's a half brother to Matoli, Breeders' Cup Sprint Champion. So boom, what's up? <laughs> that's just the taste of some of the pedigree knowledge Ren is about to drop over the next hour or so. Um, like yeah. I said, we, we've got two races. We've got the Robert B. Lewis, and we've got the, the last race of the day, race eight, uh, nice cow bread, maiden special weight. 
uh, main claiming race rather. Um, we're going to share our picks in a moment. We're going to let you know who we like in those races. And as always, if you have questions or comments, drop them in the comment section there. We will get to them. Uh, right now, we're going to get out to Santa Anita and our good friend, racing ambassador and handicapper, George. Oh, George Ortuzar. George, how you doing? I am doing fantastic. It's great to be here with such a great panel. Uh, Dan, we had such a good time in that uh, charity uh, contest. It was great to have you there. Matt, man, I, I you know, horse players, that for me, I loved watching you on horse players. Very uh, great that you're doing so successful. Ren, the whole Carruthers family, fantastic. Yeah. She's Thank doing you. that work at uh, Tampa. I love that facility. I'm Cuban, so buy it. Decide. When I go to Tampa, <laughs> hey, like, hey, I was rolling the cigars and stuff. Woo, it's a party over there in Tampa. It's fantastic, a fantastic facility. But speaking of fantastic facilities, I am here at the Great Race Place, and it is absolutely fantastic. The sun is shining. I got to put my, you know, my shades here, the jockey goggle shades, because the sun is just fantastic. I love it. And as you mentioned, I got a chance to speak to uh, both trainers that have more than half the field now with the scratches here. And the uh, the race is just spectacular. Uh, it starts also, one of my favorite bets, it starts the golden hour pick four. It starts here. That is a phenomenal bet. You can bet that uh, at first bet. Doc, at first bet, I, I encourage you to watch and wager there. But it's only it's a dollar minimum, which kind of t gets a little bit of the riffraff out, you know, the low takeout. Even with favorites, it's a great bet. It's just a phenomenal bet, and uh, so I love it. Uh, it incorporates the last two races here and the last two races at Golden Gate. But the race is here, so uh, this race, phenomenal race. Uh, you know, of course, when I think of of uh, Bob and Beverly Lewis. One of the first things that comes to mind is charismatic that they own. And what a iconic uh, picture when Chris Antley was holding charismatic's leg. Oh. I mean, it's just, it says chills down my body. And another one is, of course, was Silver Charm. Uh, and Bob Baffert, of course, trained that one. So I talked to, I got a chance to talk to my man, Doug O'Neill, right here, Doug, baby. He's still and, with uh, you. He's still with you. He's right there, yeah. And we, whew, we go way back. We used to, uh, we played basketball together. I was in that whole uh, I'll have another. I'm talking about there's no more fun than being with Doug O'Neill when that barn's winning. It's just a party. It's just wonderful. We used to jog around Hollywood Park. We got some terrible thoroughbred numbers and buyer numbers. <laughs> we, we, we really not too good at all. But, I want to uh, say, George, anyway. George, I, I want to give you a blow here. I, I just want to say, like, the viewers can tell George is extremely shy. <laughs> he's not used to this at all so please give him give him some time as he as he tries to work himself up up for this go ahead george continue all right so i talked to uh let's talk first about doug o'neill's charges i talked to him uh, uh we, we we mentioned uh that uh he's got uh you know he's got two in here and now who do you i didn't ask him who they like best but i can kind of extrapolate from what they told me he told me about wipe the slate he said you know what uh, the, uh, the the dam is by sensational, which really sprint. Uh, you know, you would know Ren, right? More <laughs> sprint oriented. So uh, you know, they're they're really trying to figure out if he's going to be able to handle the distance. Seemed much more secure with uh, with Hot Rod Charlie, uh, uh, as Ren said. Uh, half brother to Matoli, boom! Right? Is that the way you described it? Boom! Right? So, uh, what a, a phenomenal uh, race. He got a three on the thoroughgraph sheets in that Breeders' Cup. That is a spectacular number. And, it's and, like uh, race. and he just got kept getting better and better. Uh, Doug said he cannot be training any better. He's so psyched about the, uh, the uh, chances of Hot Rod Charlie. The owners were there. A uh, beautiful couple and the and the owner, he was like, make sure you say that the owner is very beautiful. So I have to say <laughs> that the owner is beautiful. I'm sorry, I was not getting in trouble. And so the owner, and he didn't say owners, plural, just his wife. Owner is very beautiful. <laughs> but uh, they're very high on uh, on High Rod Charlie. They're very excited to have Rosario ride as well. And uh, with that spectacular run, uh, he's definitely one of the ones to beat. Then I got a chance to talk to Bob Baffert. And Bob Baffert, of course, coming off that spectacular Eclipse Award win with Authentic. Uh, he was, you know, he's flying high. And uh, he uh, kind of mentioned that, you know, Pratt kind of referred to uh, Spielberg as kind of a coyote, a, a, a runner that's still maturing, that really hasn't given his best. I haven't and, heard that one before. Are you guys familiar with that term? Only, I know, only in, 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 in a... In a different context, right? <laughs> so, uh, 
You know, he he, 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 he We don't know where this show's headed. Where this this is the first <laughs> three. By, by the last one, who knows? You know, I'm definitely not gonna be wearing this jacket by the third show. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, he likes his chances. Pratt's aboard. He's drawn outside. But uh, to hear him speak uh, of uh, Medina spirit. And if you go to XBTV.com, they got the free workouts there. And you see the last workout where Medina spirit and uh, Spielberg work together. And just Medina spirit look just look better in that workout. He's doing good. Also, just ran a three. His first race was a nine in the third grab sheets. Then he bounced in the three, and he was gaining on what could be the Kentucky Derby favorite, and life is good. I mean, he made a big move at the end. So, uh, you know, he lost by less than the length to life is good. Uh, also, Hot Rod Charlie lost by uh, uh, less than a, a length as well. So uh, these two are really, they're big-time contenders. Medina Stewart already has uh, some experience drawing the one box in the sham, and it was more like a sham wow because he ran so good. And wow, and uh, you know, well, let's see. let's let let's actually, in case you know, the viewers out there haven't seen it, uh, you mentioned the sham, and you mentioned Life is Good, who on most people's lists right now is way up there, if not number one, number two on Derby hopeful list. So Medina Spirit had the, uh, you know, uh, unfortunate, you know, uh, circumstance of, of drawing into into that race up against L Life is Good, who, again, is just a beast right now. Uh, Medina Spirit, of course, uh, a lot of potential and, and will likely be the favorite here in the Robert B. Lewis. But let's take a look back at the sham. And as George mentioned, you'll notice Medina Spirit is the one horse. Life is good. No challenge from anyone. Medina Spirit trying hard in second. He's four lengths behind. And then it's Parnelli in third. They're coming to the 16th pole. And it's Life is good, still with a four-length lead, galloping without any urging from Mike Smith. Medina Spirit trying very hard and is closing that gap late. Life is good. Medina Spirit, a solid effort. Life is good wins. Three quarters of a length. I, I want to ask Matt. Matt, what did you make of that finish? Is is that a, a, a product of of Medina Spirit just you know picking up speed late, or or you know kind of hitting his best stride, or is it, or is that more of life is good getting a little lazy on the lead? I think like with with many things, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, I would probably lean a little bit more toward life is good getting a little bit. I don't want to say goofy, but he was never really asked for his best, and it's kind of one of those things. It's really difficult, I think to ask a horse to really start picking things up when for the most part, they haven't been asked to pick their feet up at any point in the run really deep in the race, especially the first time for a horse like this going two turns. Having said that, that doesn't mean that a horse like Medina spirit, I didn't think he was really running and extending well at the end of the run. And I think it bodes well for him going longer. I think this is one of those instances where you're probably looking at another position where Baffert has two to three of the best three-year-olds that you've got, this being one of them. I don't know if he was ever going to beat a horse like Life is Good on that given day, but that doesn't mean that going forward, the two of them, who knows the sort of uh, rate that they mature, who's to say Medina Spirit doesn't actually end up being the better of the two? When I watch that tape, I don't get the impression he was ever going to win that race, but that doesn't mean that he can't win this race. And again, I think he deserves to be the favorite. Ryan, what's your take on that? Well, I, I think this is a horse that's going to, you know, keep getting better as he's getting older. I mean, if you look at the pedigree there, Protonico himself, the son of Giants Causeway, and out of an AP Indy mare. So there's stamina over stamina right there. And then uh, he's out of a brilliant speed mare who happens to hail from the family of High Yield. And High Yield won the Bluegrass, the Fountain of Youth, the Hopeful. He was second in the Florida Derby, the Hollywood Futurity, third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. So, I mean, you can see that this that horse's form itself got better as he got older. So, yeah, this is a horse... Um, as Matt was just saying, I mean, he's, he's just learning. And so there is a very, very distinct possibility he could, you know, eventually eclipse his stable mate. Um, as we kick it back to George, uh, I want to put up on the screen here our first look at the live odds for uh, the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. Uh, the horse we've been talking about, Medina Spirit, as you can see right there, seven to five, that yellow indicating that, that he is indeed your favorite. Uh, as Ren mentioned earlier, the two Ron Bauer scratched. The three, Parnelli, 13 to one, 13 to one. And uh, we'll note Parnelli, four races back, lost by a neck to Hot Rod Charlie, mm -hmm. um, who is the four horse and is currently five to two. Uh, the five, Roman Centurion. Matt's going to have a lot to say about this horse in a few minutes. 
is seven to one, uh, just right there, uh, just just a touch below that morning line of eight to one. The seven, wipe the slate. Not getting too much love here on the board. Four to one morning line, drifting up to six to one right now. And Spielberg, also a little cold on the board. Seven to two morning line for Spielberg, a million dollar purchase. Um, who came in with extremely high hopes as a two-year-old for Bob Baffert, um, and who um, you know has has had some ups and downs. Uh, comes off a win in the Low South Futurity, but right now four to one on Spielberg, the eight horse on the outside. Uh, George, uh, what did Bob talk to you about when it came when it came to Spielberg um, and and how he's feeling about him? Well, like you said, you know, he, he at one point he was like, I wasn't sure what to to make of it. He was like, Wow, he was all out to beat a maiden. Uh, but then, of course, that maiden came back to crush. So, uh, again, he's still kind of like uh, trying to uh, find out where uh, Spielberg fits. As far as third graph numbers, he hasn't really – I mean, his best number has been an eight, which is not going to win this race. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think is is one that has talent, showed true grit, winning a, a nose in a grade one. So you, you can't, uh, you know, uh, go against that. But then again, uh, it would be a great headline. Bob Baffert directs Spielberg. Oh, man. <laughs> That's phenomenal. That comes about, you know, so, uh, but Medina Spirit looks good. Hey, uh, one of the guys that that uh, commented there is uh, Darwin Vizcaya. I don't know if you yes. guys know uh, Darwin. Darwin's his birthday today. It's his birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. He's a Hispanic kind of ambassador working over there at Ghost Stream Park. Feliz cumpleaños, right? Feliz cumpleaños. Feliz cumpleaños. Well, full, disclosure, first, full disclosure, this is coffee with Bailey's in it, but you can see how light colored it is. So you know it most it's Bailey's with a little coffee. <laughs> uh, you don't have to. Uh, this is a judgment free zone. We we, we never make hey, excuses. I asked you. I asked you before we went live. I said, <laughs> "Is this a dry show or?" <laughs> One of our comments a moment ago that we had up was that that they liked the number five horse, a horse we've teased a little bit, Roman Centurion. Uh, Matt, tell us a little bit about this horse, and then and then we could take a look at um, at his most recent race. But go ahead, Matt. T tell us why you like this horse specifically. Well, and, you know, we'll see the tape, obviously, momentarily, but I just felt like that most recent start, he broke his maiden in his first try going two turns. It was his second lifetime start. I think Simon Callahan is still, I, I don't know why, but I still think he's a little bit underrated as far as a conditioner is concerned. I think he does really well with really quality stock, and this is one of those horses where you just look at the, the pedigree at face value. You see Empire Maker, you see Bernardini on the bottom. You think distance is only going to be this one's friend, but you dig a little bit deeper, and, and I'm sure Ren can kind of speak to this as well. Yeah. The, the damn side, there's some fascinating horses down there. Yes. You're looking at the likes of Finder's yeah. Fee, yeah. who yeah. has done a number of things going one turn, multiple grade one winner, but that horse is also a sibling to a multiple group one steeplechase winner so <laughs> you've got a little bit of everything in there and when i watched the way that the roman centurion won that that second time start it was one of those things that you see horses who really extend down the lane and yeah. while today may not be the day for him i think he's going to be one of those horses who down the road whether it's the first saturday in may or maybe even over the summertime i feel like a mile and a quarter is going to be his bread and butter he's going to be that kind of horse that wants to go as long as they'll cart him and that may not be the case for many of these other horses who may be a little bit more on the precocious side. If he gets a little bit of pace, I think he's going to come with a run here this afternoon. I really do. Well, to, to your point about that pedigree by Empire Maker, a Belmont winner right there. And he's got he's he's known to impart such class and stamina in his get. And then, as you mentioned, Bernardini, who's just turned out to be an amazing, amazing broodmare sire. He's now got 11 grade one winners representing him as a broodmare sire, including Catholic Boy, including... Uh, 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 there's just so many, uh, my Serengeti Empress, you've got uh, the uh, Liam, Colonel Liam mm -hmm. uh, is, is uh, a Bernard, out of a Bernardini mare. So, um, it, and Maxfield, <laughs> Maxfield also, can't forget about him. But also to your point about that female family, yeah, the so many grade one winners, the grandmother of Finder's Fee, as you mentioned, Acorn Matron. Also, you've got Fantastic Find in there. You've got Dancing Spree, who won the Breeders' Cup Sprint. You've got furlough in there. So you've got a really nice balance of all these class animals, but also horses who could move. Because it's one thing to have a horse who can get a distance. It's another to have a horse who can get a distance, but also has speed. Exactly. If I could say something a la Ren, because you yeah. got to use you got to use that pencil like oh, that. You see, when you're talking about a horse, <laughs> you got to use the uh, pencil there. So uh, another thing is, uh, what a great jockey uh, JJ Hernandez has yeah. turned out to be. Yeah, fantastic. Who, uh, if anybody would 
told me, you know, even as close as last meet, that he would be the leading rider in this colony. Uh, it's just stupendous what he's done. And uh, this whole colony is just fantastic. You got Pratt, you got these guys from Northern California, like Gonzalez and Cedillo. You got Rispoli, uh, Rosario's running here. And so, and the attitude of these jockeys, let me tell you, I was a jockey agent for seven years. The attitude, they have a positive attitude. They're enthusiastic. They're really, this is a crop of jockeys that is just phenomenal. And JJ aboard uh, Roman, I didn't talk to uh, to Simon Callahan, but my boss Nate Newby did. And Simon is pretty high on his, on his charge as well. So a lot of positives in the corner of uh, Roman Centurion, including uh, the pen waving of, of uh, JJ. Oh, oh, Renee Red. oh, oh baby. Oh, you know you didn't. To wave the pen. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> one more pen wave. Because I should mention, how do I forget this? I mean, uh, Empire Maker, the sire of Pioneer of the Nile, who won this, you know, won this race. And then we're not the sire American Pharaoh. So there you go. <laughs> we, we, we did mention we have, we have a quick backtrack uh, to Roman Centurion's maiden, maiden, maiden win. We want to show that. And on the other side, I'm going to come back and tell you why he's not going to win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Star Sailor is on the inside second. Santos to Wilson is next. On the outside, Roman Centurion's running a very big race. He's closing. Center of the track, Chasing Fame is also flying. Here's Chasing Fame coming after Roman Centurion who takes the lead. Roman Centurion draws off by two and a half handwritten. Star Sailor, du jour, Chasing Fame. It's Roman Centurion, another one for Juan Hernandez. All right. Look, I, I, I thought he did it well. Um, he, he did get, obviously, a great setup. But but closing the way he did and, and winning by, you know, three and three-quarter length like that, visually impressive. And, again, like you said, I respect Simon Callahan. He, he, he so many times, you know, will, will take a horse um, that, you know, uh, you know who, who might have been overlooked even in a prior race, win a maiden race, and then move them up into stakes company and run well with them. My, my concern with this horse is that he ran on Lasix last out for the first time. Mm -hmm. And is off LASIK. So um, I think, I think, you know, most horses you would expect uh, a bit of a regression, um, you know, coming off LASIK in a situation like this. Richard Buckhans, by the way, just commented and just literally wrote like a, you know, uh, a, a novel about Roman Centurion. <laughs> I don't know if it'll fit on the screen or if it'll block <laughs> all of our faces. Um, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll try to put, let's see what happens. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but anyway, we'll step up for made and win last out in a big test here going to graded stakes. Um, yeah, look, I, I agree too. Uh, and, and you've got a number of other horses here who are super competitive. I want to take a look at some of the horses on the track right now. Um, oh, that's in the center. It's a little hard to look at that. <laughs> I'm not as concerned as you about the, the, the off the LASIK thing because we don't oh, yeah, know if that's what moved him up because it may have just well been, you know, he's getting his distance. Again, Empire Maker of Bernardini going from six and a half to a mile and a 16th, you're going to move up. But, I mean, it's possible what you're saying. It is possible. Um, we'll talk later about, because we're going to also be talking about race eight. There are a few horses in there who've been on LASIK, they're still on LASIK, and, and they're running back very quickly. Now, I don't like that because it, you know, the recovery time's not um, as favorable. But I- You know, I, one of the other things I would add about Roman Centurion, and, and this isn't meant to be sort of, a, you know, a, a fail safe if the horse doesn't run for whatever reason, but the idea of, you know, we, we're all very familiar with Santa Anita and Santa Anita going okay. two turns is a track that tends to be kinder to speed than perhaps think of some other tracks, whether it's in New York or, or in Oak Lawn or, or something like that. So he, let's say he comes with a bit of a run, flattens out a little bit, finishes third or fourth. If the connections are still very high on him, it wouldn't stun me. Simon Callahan, someone who's not afraid to ship horses, it wouldn't surprise me. And, and I've always felt this way about good horses based in Southern California that don't have that natural early speed that many of Baffert's horses do, that many of the other sort of, I don't want to say stereotypical horses that we've seen come out of Southern California and go and run well elsewhere. They usually all have good early foot. A horse like this, it wouldn't stun me if for whatever reason they said, you know what, if we're going to prevail against bigger and better horses, we probably need to do it away from a track like Santa Anita because mm -hmm. the running style is just not conducive to success. Having said that, if he bucks the trend and runs really well here, I think you want to upgrade him a couple points just because of that fact. I like it.
Like yeah. in, in that race, they had, uh, you know, Bob Baffert had a big favorite there, DuJour. So uh, mm-hmm. he just put that horse away like he was standing still. So it was a visually impressive effort by Roman Centurion. And if you're looking for, for form lines, I get it. We've only had one horse come out of that race, but that horse did come right back to break the maiden next out with a 60 buyer, improved the buyer speed figure nine Ooh. points from that start to the subsequent one. So uh, again, very you can't really make any serious calls. There's no sample. There's one horse that came out of it, but it's at least encouraging to see that as opposed to a horse that did no running in the next start. All right, George, we know you've got uh, things to do, places to go, uh, babies to kiss, hands to shake. Um, <laughs> before we let you go, give us give us your, your, your last second gut uh, opinion and, and maybe even suggest a bet that you want to throw out there for the people watching. Well, I mean, again, I mean, I, I think Medina Spirit showed that first time going two turns, uh, just, uh, you know, can do nothing but uh, get better. It was a wonderful second to probably the favorite in the, uh, in the Kentucky Derby. The workout since was spectacular. Uh, Bob Baffert's won this race eight times, so he knows how to get ready to win this race. And uh, it's going to be my pick as well. I just want to also tease, like uh, here at Santa Anita, you know, we didn't race yesterday. Uh, of course, they're always trying to uh, make judgments in the, uh, in the benefit of safety for the equine athletes. And for the jockey. So uh, this weekend, we tried to be as safe as possible. No turf racing today. But next weekend, we got a big weekend coming up. It's going to be fantastic. February 6th. Uh, it's not announced yet, but they're going to have a big announcement as far as the uh, as the pick six is concerned. So uh, <laughs> what could it possibly be? Ooh, what, what? <laughs> well, well played, George. Well played. Uh, but, uh, yeah, certainly next weekend we're expecting a, a big weekend. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. And I'll Be see well, you uh, next time for the San Felipe. All right. All right. We'll see you, man. Be well. Thanks for popping in. All right. All right, George Ortuzar from Santa Anita. As I said, a very shy guy. I, you know, you, you gotta, <laughs> What's your daddy so shy? you got to give him some time. Uh, we do have a couple of people chiming in with um, with their picks uh, in the upcoming Robert B. Lewis stakes. Uh, and then we have a question here, which I know Ren – uh, Ren has an answer to what's the double um, and we've all taken on this challenge, right? We're going to give our $20 betting strategy. Ren, what is the double? Well, I have to, I have to adjust my double because I asked Ron Ellis about a first or he has in race eight because the horse has tremendous pedigree because uh, let me get my notes here. Uh, cousin Eddie, um, the mom, she, she raced uh, once on dirt, and that was at San Anita, and she got a 72 by her speed figure and a show finish in the main special weight. And then she's also from the family of Bridgetown and Strike the Gold. But he tells me, and I'm going to quote him, uh, I didn't know, I don't know if I got the clearance for this, but I'm, yeah, he says, sure. So <laughs> I asked him if I could share this. Uh, I asked him if he thinks this horse is ready to win first out. He says, hi, Ren, I don't think so. He's big and pretty green. I think he's going to need two turns. He doesn't have much speed. So, okay. That was a horse that was on my double, so now I have to take him off. Um, so basically, I'm going to go with uh, with Hot Rod Charlie over Crash Corrigan, who's the one horse, I believe, mm-hmm. um, in that race. And uh, reason being, uh, he, there was a next out uh, a next out winner from that race, Shimmer Me Timbers, uh, won a main 50 by two and a half lengths, got a 63 buyer speed figure that was an estate bred. Um, family of grade six winners, Riker and Cashel Castle and uh, great one, grade one winner, Lunar Spook. And uh, then I guess I, I, I was using Seahawk Cody. Ren, you got to you got to save all this stuff. We've got. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, you want the double. I was trying to tell you why I like it. Just okay. give us the double. Give it okay, to us. Okay. okay. Four, four over one, two. And now I have to add one more horse to, to make it my 15 because five dollars. Go with the double. six. Go with six. the six. Okay, Trust okay. me. That's who I'm going with. Four, I'm one, explaining two, six. a bit. Four, one, two, six. <laughs> dollars that's a 15 dollar wager and then i'm going to do uh an exact box in this race of a four or five that's five dollars so that's twenty dollars all done beautiful beautiful matt who you got yeah i'm gonna go with uh, all my twenty dollars here in this race ten dollars to win on roman centurion i think it's just one of those things where the price is right he's eight to one and and again he's stepping up taking on winners for the first time running style perhaps compromises him a little bit but the price is right and, and I know some people don't like this idea, but I'm also going to play a $10 straight exacta of the horse I think is the most likely winner, and that's the number one Medina Spirit, but also adding my horse underneath, where if he does come with that run, but it's not quite enough, you're looking at right now, it looks like a $2 exacta that's coming back 34 bucks. So I'm going to play that for 10 bucks. You know, obviously, do simple math, five times whatever the exacta will pay or, or probable would be. That's what you're looking at. So 
realistically, if you wanted to chop it up and, and weight it a little bit differently, that's entirely up to you. But just for, for simplicity's sake, 10 to win on the five and then a $10 cold exact of one five. I'm going to go so, sort of with you in terms of looking for a little bit of value and sort of with Ren uh, in terms of my top selection, who is going to be Hot Rod Charlie. Uh, but I also like Parnelli a little bit. Again, a horse we haven't spoken much about. Uh, the last race, it looked like they tried to take him back a little further and rate again. That was that Life is Good Medina Spirit race. Uh, re, you know, that whole field was strung out, and I can give the horse uh, a break for that one. Generally speaking, Parnelli is forwardly placed. Um, I could see him being on the lead here. And because of that, um, I think that he's going to go a long way up front. He shows he's got a lot of grit um, once he gets to the front. So um, there's my bet. Uh, it's simple. You, you started here. It's going to hopefully we get to the last race with this. You see, I used the 6-2 run, so I wasn't just throwing you something that, that I didn't use myself. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a $5 double, 3-4 with 1-6. So 3-4 uh, being uh, Parnelli and Hot Rod Charlie. They are going into the gate at Santa Anita for the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. Uh, we will get you out there with some sound and with a full screen here. Do we hear it? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, I, hear, I, hear Mir 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 <laughs> I love Frank Miramati. Medina Spirit is in. Roman Centurion. Here's Parnelli. Wipe the slate will follow him. I'll say really quickly, I do love that uh, that uh, the um, the uh, Zaydan Racing Stables, they've got a theme with their names. I mean, you had Princess Noor, that's Arabic, and then Medina Spirit, Medina's in Saudi Arabia. Got the theme going. I like that. I like theme stables. <laughs> and they're off in the Robert B. Lewis. Wipe the slate flies out of the gate. Medina Spirit on the inside. Parnelli is in between them up close, too. Then it's Spielberg and Hot Rod Charlie. And the trailer is Roman Centurion into the first turn and Medina Spirit intent on making the lead and does so in front three quarters of the length. Parnelli between and wipe the slate on the outside, takes second. A gap of four. Hot Rod Charlie is next, just in front of Spielberg and another two to Roman Centurion. On to the backstretch in the Robert B. Lewis Stakes. And it's Medina Spirit dueling with wipe the slate. Parnelli has backed off, three off the leaders. Another two, Hot Rod Charlie starts to gather a little bit of momentum. He's racing three in front of Spielberg and Roman Centurion. A half mile from home, Medina Spirit puts a length on, wipe the slate. Parnelli trying to come back for more. Hot Rod, Rod Charlie in striking, in striking range. He's two and a half off the pace coming to the 3 8 pole. Spielberg, yellow cap at the rail. Roman Centurion outside of him. Medina Spirit has a one-length lead on Wipe the Slate. On the outside, Hot Rod Charlie, Roman Centurion is starting to gather right some momentum on the far outside. He's moving up to take second as the field turns for home. Medina Spirit called on now. Center of the track, Roman Centurion. Hot Rod Charlie is in between them. Roman Centurion, Hot Rod Charlie trying to run down Medina Spirit. They're inside the eighth pole. Between horses, Hot Rod Charlie, Medina Spirit, tough as nails. Roman Centurion on the outside. Roman Centurion, Medina Spirit, and Hot Rod Charlie. What a game. Oh, my God. That was Spirit. really awesome, actually. And turn them all oh, my. Roman Centurion. Maddie, I feel sick for you. Well, I, yeah, I mean, look, I, I thought it was a good effort from the horse. This is going to sound like Debbie Downer now. I mean, I, looking at the final time, and I don't know how the track has necessarily been playing as far as times go for the day. I mean, this is this is not a, a sparkling time, if, if the <laughs> clock is accurate. Um, and, you know, we've talked about it in the past. Typically in dirt racing, if you have – it's a little bit different with turf. But in dirt racing, if you've got three horses across the wire, it makes me really wonder how good the race possibly could be. Mm -hmm. um, but having said that, from an entertainment standpoint, <laughs> fantastic race. Um, and, and look, give Medina spirit credit. He, he dug in very, very gamely wow. given the fractions. They went very, very fast early on for him to put away the other speeds and hold off the two horses who basically had the run of the race because of the pace scenario. You, you know, maybe you want to give him some bonus points for that. If the, if the track is playing very slow, maybe you can give him a mulligan here, but boy, 46 and one for a mile and a 16th. I mean, <laughs> going to have to do considerably better than that going forward.
No, yeah. I, I agree with that. This track can be, this track can sometimes be slower. It just depends. I mean, you know, they slowed up, they made it more safe. Yeah. Uh, so, so a lot of times you're going to see something like that. I do, I do like to see that a horse after, I mean, that opening quarter was good and the, the half was fine. They slowed up um, later, but he still, sometimes horses get mental and even if they get away with something early, um, they'll throw it. I don't know if you know, you notice this every now and then when they do get their own way, sometimes they'll still throw it out later because mentally they just feel like, wow, I've been out here all by myself for this long and now there's another horse and they get distracted. Mm. So it, it's encouraging to see that he had two horses breathing down his throat latch yeah. there and he still persevered on like that. He was never going to give a quarter to him. It looked like, um, and, and it, it was tight. Now I do feel bad for, uh, for hot rod Charlie there in the middle. It looked like he, he was sort of like squeezed in between. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to see the head on there to see how I tight it got. I too, Cause I do think he took a bump uh, a little bit here. Um, oh, we're already making excuses for Hot Rod Charlie. Me and Ryan, we're like, I think yeah, he got. Yeah. I think he got. I think, yeah, I, I think I he got one too. He definitely got one. <laughs> now, now, again, without going too far into the weeds about speed figures and things like right, that, if right. you're just trying to look and see what these horses, or at least two of them, had done in the past, I mean, you've got a horse like Medina Spirit who had a 99 coming into this, yeah. and Hot Rod Charlie had a 94 as a two-year-old. So. If you want to sit there and say, and it's, I think, entirely within the realm of possibility that a horse like Roman Centurion jumped up that 10 to 15 points, you know, it, it's really not a far-fetched idea. Again, if you're just trying to say, well, they've done this in the past, maybe they did it here in this spot, um, it, it'll be very interesting. I mean, this could, this is going to be a fascinating race to go back with time, and that's the only way that we're going to be able to really make any kind of call on on any of these horses in these races is we're going to need a little bit of time to be able to go back and say, okay, well, it was either good or bad. This could either be the the keyest of key races where you've got three horses who are all very good, and this is going to be the race that is very, very productive going forward, or we'll look back in you know six, eight weeks and say, you know what? Okay, they were probably the B string, maybe a notch below the life is goods of the world and some of these other horses. But um, you know, I guess that that's that's part of what makes this time of year fun is you can watch the race and say it was entertaining. Who knows? Maybe it was good, maybe it wasn't, but we're gonna find out in short order soon enough when they, they come back and run again. Yeah. Well, uh, I, know, yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no no I I was just I was just thinking out loud and now I totally forgot what I was going to say so go ahead. <laughs> you know I actually um so a couple of things first of all I see George O still there George can you still hear us? Give me the thumbs up if you could hear us. I'd like to get a reaction from you in a second. I, hang 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 with us for a second. I did want to put up a couple of comments that we have here because it kind of speaks to some of the points both of you have been making. Steve Gilfeather, in terms of quick reaction, can't wait to bet against Medina Spirit last night. Obviously, looking at that final time and, and not being impressed by the three-way photo finish there, um, as you pointed out, Matt. But then you have Andy Stokes. What a fighter, right? I mean, because the horse totally. took all the heat early um, and then was still there late. Um, so, look, I, I think you can parse this a couple of different ways. Um, and only time will tell, really. Luckily, if these horses do reappear in the San Felipe and the Santa Anita Derby, we're going to be there with you to watch this as this whole series unfolds. This is the drama of the Derby Trail, and, and this is why it's exciting to watch these races and track them. And well, then, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just, go ahead another, right. What I was going to say was, you know, another thing that's always difficult, too, and I, sometimes you have to just take it with a grain of salt, is when you do have these short fields, times are not going to speak as loudly as they may otherwise. Um, because again, it really sometimes does just come down to almost a battle of attrition and what a horse has constitutionally within themselves in terms of heart. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can still watch a race like this. You can, you can accept those, you know, up until the half anyway, and be like, okay, cool, solid. And then whatever happened after that, you can appreciate it for what the horse was willing to do to throw down to maintain the lead. Well, and look, I mean, there's, I gave you sort of the, the reason to be speculative. You want the reason to be excited about it going forward. You've got a horse like Medina Spirit who not only ran fast prior to this race, but just showed that he does have that sort of fortitude to say, you know what, I'm going to deal with all the other stuff early on and still be able to hang on at the end. That's a feather in his cap. That's not something that should go overlooked entirely. Hot Rod Charlie, this is his first start since the beginning of November. He's been gone yeah. for some time. So for this to be his return effort, he's going to move forward out of this race. I'd be stunned if he didn't. 
And Roman Centurion, he carried ground. Yes, he had the pace to run at, but it was his first time against winners. So yeah. if you want to, it depends on where you land. And I think that's the beauty of handicapping. You, It's all subjective. You can be the one to sit there and say, I either loved it or I hated it. And these are the reasons. And, you know, again, I, we won't really know until we see them come back. But I kind of just gave you the reasons either to love it or to hate it. And we'll find out in time, ultimately, how it shakes down. Well, can we also say, I mean, going back to talking about Hot Rod Charlie coming out of that Breeders' Cup Juvenile, you know, is, you know, somebody who works at Future Stars Friday. Uh, I got to give some love to that race. It's been productive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you've had uh, horses come out of the juvenile um, and, and really perform. So now here's another example of that with <laughs> there was no claim, right? No claim of foul on. on <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right? So we're third, right? <laughs> But still, I mean, that's a show dog finish in a graded stakes derby yeah. prep that is now coming out of that Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, yeah. so, so, so that that flatters essential quality, obviously, who put him away. And essential quality, you know, since we are talking derby, let's also be uh, reminded of the fact that this is a horse who mentally was still pretty green after he had won the Claiborne Breeders' Fraternity. Um, uh, Brad Cox told me that Louis Sides got, got off the horse. was like, he doesn't even know what he's doing out there. And mm -hmm. so then when you saw him get a little more serious there in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and still win looking like he was having fun, it, it, it gives you, you know, sort of that anticipation and excitement of, well, what's the horse going to do when he puts it all together? So we have essential quality out there. We've got prevalence out there. Uh, there are a lot of good horses to be excited about. Yep. And, and also get excited for um, a loaded field of 11 horses coming up in the eighth race, which we will show you live here and which we will also analyze and give you picks for. Right now, you got the replay of the Robert B. Lewis up. We'll leave that for you. And um, to kind of you know break it down as it's happening, um, as we look back on it, George, uh, what did you think here? Uh, we're watching the replay now. Uh, there's Medina Spirit going to the lead, mm -hmm. and, and obviously uh, you know the horse uh, wiped the slate to the outside, comes put some early pressure on. But what were you thinking as you are watching this unfold? Well, I mean, uh, I thought that uh, that I was in perfect position with the uh, with Medina Spirit. Uh, I thought he would be up close. He was second to Life uh, is Good, so he was kind of in that leading pack last time. So here he's traveling easily, and uh, and he's looking good. And I'm thinking, well, you know, some of these closers are going to start getting ready to, to make their move. And uh, the seven put some pressure on the one. But you know what? I know the Super Bowl is coming up. I know there's a lot of exciting sports out there. Is there anything more exciting than horse racing? <laughs> no. Not one of the most exciting yeah. races. I don't care who you had. Oh, my goodness. I was screaming like a little third grader. It was a fun race. It was oh a very God, fun race. What a fun race. I don't know what the times were. I don't know how fast it was. <laughs> but I know it was exciting. And that's what I love horse racing. It was very, very exciting. And here, I mean, this is just a nice looking mover. Medina Spirit, just like in the workout, uh, looks like a racehorse. You know, this is a racehorse. And then when they looked him in the eye, he responded. Gutty performance, showing true grit. Bob Baffert hands off to him. Simon as well. Doug, they had these runners ready to throw it down. And boy, did they throw it down. Uh, at I mean, this, at this exact crazy. moment, George, at this exact moment, Matt was snapping. Matt, Matt thought he was home right here, and I thought he was home too. I'm sorry you have to watch this again, Matt. No, but, but, but I mean, to me, to me, this is this is the part of handicapping that is the most fun, is to go back and, and either see something that maybe didn't pan out the way you had hoped it would, something that some of these horses did that maybe live you didn't notice. For me, watching that replay back, Medina Spirit, I, I actually now like the race a little bit more just watching it one more time through because not only did he deal with that early pace pressure that George was speaking of, but if you go and watch on the far turn and they're going to show you the head on here, he was really early to change leads. And when he opened up by a length, his ears went straight up in the air. I kind of get the vibe that the horse oh, doesn't yeah, really know what he's doing yet. But the, the horse wasn't very clean either. If you just For him to gallop right. out the way that he did, I, I think you probably now, again, it, it all depends your the eye of the beholder. What do you think of it? It's all entirely up to you as the handicapper. Me watching the replay one time on top of the live run, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more interested now because I do think this is a horse who has room to improve if he puts his mind to it. Can we also, also say this is the first time I'm noticing that the track is listed as good. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with some of that added moisture in the surface, I mean, you can you can give a little bit of a, a you know, a pass on the slower time. Another thing we learned about is maybe we could say, you I'm know what, uh, <laughs> wipe the slate. Maybe 
it, it is, you know, a little bit of sprint breeding. Maybe uh, going long is not going to be his game. Also, Spielberg just, you know, he didn't have the quite the strong thoroughgraph numbers coming into this and really didn't deliver as well. So we learned a, a lot about those two. And the top three, I mean, they just uh, – inseparable, obviously. And moving forward, these are young three-year-olds. They have so much room to improve. And uh, and uh, it's going to be exciting as we move forward in this Road to the Derby series here at the Great Race Place. Yes. Yeah, Spielberg, you mentioned, by the way, again, finishing fourth. But, you know, um, with every reason to, to, have, to have done a little bit better. I did see on the head-on, Ren, and I think you saw this, um, Wipe the Slate came out and took a good – a, a good bump. Uh, well, well, gave a good bump actually to Spielberg out of the gate. Look at, look at, look at that. Did you just see that? Come on. Yeah, Come Hot Rod on. Charlie should have won. Should have won. Got ping -ponged <laughs> in there. Did you just see that poor boy? Yeah. <clears throat> look, Hot Rod Charlie ran a good race. I mean, I, like, I'm not, I'm not upset with that. Like, like Matt also alluded to earlier, first race back from the Breeders' Cup. I'm not upset with that race at and, all. You know, how could I have forgotten? Also, I, I didn't even, as a, as a petty geek, mention, you know, Hot Rod Charlie, damn by Indian Charlie, won the Santa Anita Derby, was undefeated going into the Kentucky Derby, and then he gets beat by a stable mate. Now yeah. he's only lost, and he's retired, and then he's hired Uncle Mo. Yay. <laughs> Next time is that brother to Batoli. Boom! Boom! <laughs> no, it's King Kong. You should show that back in slow motion. Boom, boom, now, boom. now, also something to, to factor in. I'm going through taking a look at some of the results that we've seen already yeah, today. Do we have? Do we have? Can you compare some times here? So we the, can the, the track contact? is the track is very very slow. Okay. So this is not nearly, and again, this is, you know, you need to be able to have some sort of reference point, yeah. you know, in, in real time. It, it didn't look great now. Looking back, I mean, you had that San Pasquale earlier, and I know it was only a five-horse field. They went a mile and an eighth and 52 flat. I mean, oh. you're expecting at Santa Anita typically a time closer to 47 or 48, you know, for, for a distance like that. So I, looking back now, I think it's entirely fair to, to think – that this is a very deep racetrack, and you know what? Maybe it's not yielding blistering times, but to Ren's <laughs> point, you had the rain, and obviously, into George's point, I, I, honestly, a, a deeper track is going to be a safer track for the most part. So no, I, I, I have no problem with, with yielding a slower time, and now you at least get to kind of, okay, we factor that in, and it'll be fascinating to see what the speed figure makers use, but um, I'm not nearly as concerned about the time now looking back at it. You know, and that's so, it, it is interesting because like, as I said, you know, I only noticed, did you guys know that that track was listed as good when it, when it was run? Uh, well, I knew that, that they, that there was some rain. And so I, I assume there's some moisture in it. I, you know, I, yeah, I, I didn't even know, know it rained over what's your, what's your, what's your, that's bad on my part. I didn't know. No, it's all right. Rain. George, what's your take on, I mean, yeah, how much, I mean, how, how much moisture is there in the track right now? You know, Dennis Moore, who's our track superintendent, uh, sealed the track. And there was, you know, it rained like crazy over the uh, over the weekend. It, it, it took a lot of water. So, uh, you know, I mean, in the past, like Matt said, you Santa Anita, known for blistering fast tracks. And whoever goes to the lead is tough to, to go by. Really, he's got this track where it is pretty fair. And so even with that, being slow, being a good track, a fair track, I thought even more impressive – of a, a performance by Medina Spirit, uh, who really the track wasn't favoring that kind of speed, especially since he took some heat early on and then just kept finding and finding through the stretch. Really uh, a great performance. And then, uh, you know, hats off to Bob Baffert for doing such a good job to get have him ready. Yeah. All right, George, we, we, we told we told you we we're letting you go, but uh, we saw you <laughs> pop up again and we said, you know what, we're not gonna, we're not going to deny you the encore, right? The, 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 the fans were cheering. They were applauding. They were like, George, 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 you have to come back out. Well, I couldn't I couldn't stop watching the show. You guys are so uh, so great. So I was like, I'm going to watch this whole show. I'm just going to enjoy the, the races and the, and the watch you three. Where you guys are doing a wonderful job. All right. Well, awesome, George. We appreciate you being on. And, again, hopefully we uh, will connect with you uh, in, right. in the second edition of this series coming up uh, on March 6th. All right. I'll see you guys on March 6th. Have a great show. Hi, George. Good luck George. George. The golden hour uh, double. Don't don't forget that. <laughs> oh always promoted. Always promoted. Love yes, it. Sir. I'm already thinking of so many fun things we can do with ABR regarding like, okay, derby theme party, right? So like, you know, inspiration from the horse's name. So like Medina Spirit, can we, you know, you can have like a, a baklava cocktail <laughs> sometime, like a flavored like honey type. <laughs> The, come on, you know what's up here, Dan Forgeman, Morocco, Moroccan. Look, if you want to, you want to write a blog about it. You know, drinks and their and their horse equivalent. No, I want to be fed and given. <laughs> <laughs> no work, just consumption. Oh yeah.
Um, you know, no. speaking, speaking of stuff going on in ABR, I just wanted to throw out, you know, we, a lot of times we do a lot of, um, you know, we try to take fans, you know, as close to the game as we can, take them behind the scenes. Um, one of the cool things we just launched this week is a new series with a jockey that some of the viewers may or may not have ever heard of. Uh, I want to show that video and uh, I want to get your reaction when we, uh, when we come back on the other side of it. Hello. Hello everyone. My name is Chelsea Bailey. I'm a 10 pound ladybug apprentice jockey and also a professional MMA fighter. I have been an athlete for over 10 years of my life. I have rode at Oakland Park, Churchill Downs, Belterra Park, Keeneland, Kentucky Downs, and also at Canterbury. Um, I have fought and wrestled all over the United States throughout high school and college, and I've also fought internationally in Brazil. I'm gonna be able to show you Oakland Park 2021 through my eyes and from my point of view, what it's like to live in hot springs in Arkansas where Oakland Park is located. All right, thanks y'all. That's awesome. Um, like getting on a horse, pretty scary. Yeah. Getting into that cage, even Dude. scarier. Can we oh, get which, her like, which one do you think with, scary? Well, can we get her with Calvin Burrell, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I had total flashbacks. I was like, oh wow, I could see her sort of sparring with Calvin. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would actually pay to see that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, safe, safe to say the toughest athlete that we have not just in horse racing, but maybe the United States. I mean, going yeah. going from riding in the afternoon and in the mornings to fighting in the cage. I mean, that's, I, <laughs> what does that double pay? What does that exactly mean? <laughs> you know? She's so pretty. Like, I, and, and so she she must be good in the ring because she's protected her face. Yeah, and not, not, not taking many punches. Um, yeah. no, she's, she, she's been fun to work with. We've got a lot more videos that are gonna roll out in the next couple of weeks. And so, uh, you can check them out on americasbestracing.net and also uh, check out our social media accounts. I'm uh, getting a lot of comments here, and I, I always tell people if you drop, you know, some some like flattery on here, you say anything, you know, how good we look, how good we sound, you're gonna get on the show. Um, so Stephanie knows, like, you know what, like we, we're with you, like we, we want to do our, every show. Thank you. We we love that. Um, uh, George fan, in case I'm sure George is still watching, uh, uh, <laughs> wanting more of George, as does Travis. Give us more George. That's fun. So, absolutely. Um, all right. So we have another race uh, as we've teased and as we promised. And this I'm, I'm especially excited about because, you know, as we said earlier, like Ren, you know, her specialty, you know, is the two-year-olds and, and the three-year-olds. As they're making their, their first few starts, she knows how to dig into that pedigree and give you information that you're not going to find when you're looking at the past performances. Ren, I want to do this, though. When yeah. we talk about a couple of these horses, like super simplify it because like no, even I can me sometimes I have a hard time I'm like, sad like right this. now though. I'm sad that Ron told me that his horse is green and not ready yet because he's so beautiful out there and he has the best pedigree by far because he hails from the female family of Strike the Gold. Well explain Ren, all, Ren, all I'll that. say is yeah, all I'll say is yeah. don't get off because of that. You're right. What is wrong? What does a trainer know? He's, he's ten. No, not even, not even that. I, know, I don't mean I know, it in that light. He's ten to one, and and this field, the horses that have run, I'm not. not I mean, are we terrified of any of them? No, I'm definitely not terrified of them. And this is the thing. And so, I this is where I'm going to give my little, uh, uh, you know, just in case things go awry, speech. Is that yes, I love pedigrees. Pedigrees matter most when it's a horse trying something new for the first time, whether it's a new surface, new distance, or uh, it is a main special weight and everything's a blank and you're looking for a diamond in the rough because you don't want to just play connections. Now, when you are dealing with main claiming races, it's a little bit more difficult because a lot of times the horses that are in there that have really good pedigree, there's something wrong and not, not something, not, not, not something where the horse shouldn't race at all. I mean, I'm not saying people are running horses that shouldn't be running, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe there's a, a horse that it has action that is hindered. They have a crooked leg of some kind. They can run, but they can't run as efficiently. Or maybe they, they don't have as good a windpipe, so they can't uh, you know go on and persevere and have the stamina uh, to, to run at top level. So that being said, it gets a little more tricky and you have to kind of fill in some blanks. I ultimately, you know, go ahead and then and use a combination of factors regarding that. Originally, the horse in the, in the field that I feel had the felt had the best pedigree was cousin Eddie. And a quick way to figure out in a situation like this of a horse who might have a better pedigree, because the female family means most. You see here, you see the different dam sires. A lot of these dam sires are, are lower level studs or, you know, not at, not, I can, 
you know, we love all studs. I don't want to put anybody down, but they're not like the big price Kentucky studs, right? But yet here this horse was in there and you see he's by a tis now mare. So already you're like, okay, well that mare must have pedigree. So I dug in and that's how I know that her family is a family responsible for producing Strike the Gold. So that's why I liked him originally. And like, he, like uh, to Matt's point, there's nobody in here to be scared of. So you can take a swing with him. I mean, heck, even if you put two bucks on him, what is he right now? Uh, he is. Ten to one. Yeah. So I mean, well, Brent, know, Brent, explain, ex kind of connect the dots for us a little bit more. Like, why is it that a horse with good pedigree, um, where you're looking at the horse and you're saying, look, everything here should fit? Why would this horse not be ready? Like from the trainer's perspective, like what does that mean? Like why? Well, he he tells me that he thinks he wants two turns. He wants ground. And so this is a six for long race. Um, Champ Pegasus is by Fuziachi Pegasus. This is a Kentucky Derby winner. Tis now two-time classic winner. So sometimes when these horses are bigger bodied, when you're looking for a horse for a distance, for example, you'll you'll notice horses, and I haven't seen a, a, a you know, a, just a perfect sideways shot of them, but Horses that are longer in build tend to be better at a, a, a length of ground. Horses that are more compact, that look a little more quarter horsey, uh, are better at sprints. There is a com confirmation component that the angles of a horse's body enable it to have an edge at certain distances and certain surfaces. And that deals also with, again, like if we're talking surface for, for horses on grass, you want to see a horse with a little more angle to the pastern. The pastern is that little bit of... Uh, uh, of length between the hoof and the ankle. That's the pastern. If it's long and springy, that's a horse that's gonna do better on grass most likely if he has a big foot also, because you know, a big footed horse with a springy pastern, sometimes they lose, they lose a bit of ground in dirt because it takes more for them to like pull themselves out of it and go forward. So there's all these little different key things here. We'll see the nine looks really good on the track right now, whoever that is, subdue it. Sabuda. That's your favorite, yeah. The, the problem, I, the, the, my concern with Sabuda is this. This horse just ran on January 22nd, which I wouldn't have a problem so much with, except for the fact that the horse ran with Lasix Den and is now running back with Lasix. And so it's, it's sometimes, it not all horses, some horses thrive on quick turnarounds, but sometimes when you're, you run with Lasix and then you get Lasix right back again, it takes some starch out. So if the horse is a short price, like two to one, I'd rather let the horse beat me mm. than, than because I look at that horse now as vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I think the number one in here, Crash Corrigan, this is a horse that is getting first time Lasix. You already saw him put in a good performance there at Del Mar at the main 50 state bred level. Um, I already mentioned Shimmer Me Timbers came back to win by two and a half lengths in another state bred main 50, got a 63 buyer for that. This horse has pedigree as well. Family of graded stakes winners, Riker. Uh, and Cashel Castle, as well as grade one winner, Lunar Spook. Um, I think Seahawk Cody, that horse um, has three siblings that were both first out, uh, two of them were first out winners. And the one that was the other one, the third sibling, he was second by a head. Okay, so um, Seahawk Cody making his debut again by Champ Pegasus and out of a Henny Hughes mare, Henny Hughes and Sparks Speed precociousness. Um, so this is a horse that maybe at a price is one we can look at. He's currently 10 to one on the board. And then you mentioned the loot is mine. Now this is a horse that Peter Miller started on turf and for good reason, the horse has, you know, a, a pedigree that, you know, can kind of lend itself to that, but it's one of those pedigrees that can also flip. Now, if you draw a line through that last race, I don't know why he is. I, I don't know if you know, Dan, because I know this is. I, you know what? I, I don't, but I, I will say this. Yes. When I see a horse ease, it comes back quickly. As, the, as the eight to five favorite and has previously got, got, gone off as the favorite just right. about in every race, they bring the horse back at the same level. They're obviously not concerned, yeah, right? right? I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 you know, in, in their mind, it has to be something isolated. And I think if this is a horse that's been going off at, you know, even money and, and you know, to, to two to one, and I get him today, I was hoping for better than four to one. He just clicked down to four to one. I, I don't really want four to one. If I could have gotten six or seven to one, I would have been really excited about this horse. Yeah. Uh, but four to one right now. Um, go ahead. If you want to let us know what you think about him. And then Matt, I want to hear your thoughts. Well, the only other thing I'll say about him is, uh, I mean, obviously you got, <laughs> you've got a, you know, a really quick uh, speed influence in there with Midnight Loot being the damn sire. But I will say you've got the blinkers going on again. He, does, he was not wearing them last out. And also, he's getting a big weight, uh, not compared to the rest of the field, but compared to what he's done 
uh, in the past. He's getting a big weight break from that last race in which he was saddled 124. He's now down to 119. So um, weight can matter. Uh, and it's just another factor to take into consideration. Matt? Yeah, I mean, so a level of racing like this to me, while it is horse racing, to me, the trainers come into play much, much more at this level mm -hmm. for the reasons that Ren has alluded to, the reasons that we've brought up. Maybe there's a confirmation issue. There's a reason that a horse is in at this level or debuting at this level. Um, and, and certain trainers do better at placing horses in positions like this than others do. It's just a fact of the matter. Um, despite the fact that Ron Ellis believes that the horse is going to want to go longer. He does really well with this sort of move as far as statistics yeah. are concerned. And again, it's not like we're talking about a seven to two or a three to one shot. He's 10 to one. I'm, I'm con entirely content taking 10 to one on cousin Eddie. And you know what, if he lags behind early on and he only finishes fifth and picks up some pieces, I'm not going to be devastated by it. I think there's a reason to believe that a horse like this has a chance in a race where none of the horses who have run have done anything all that spectacular for what it's worth for, for Ron Ellis's barn past five years, dirt first time starter and maiden claiming races six for 16 with a 440 ROI. So pretty it's a good. small sample size. I understand yeah, that, but, but I, I, I think it's pretty solid. Um, and you know, I, I think some other things at this level that maybe you want to factor in and it's not, it's not gospel. It's not always accurate, but I do think sometimes there's some signal in there, you know, a horse like stones river, you have the move to Abel Cedillo, who by all accounts is one of the, the leading riders in Southern California. Craig Lewis is a shrewd horseman. This is a horse who is paired up buyer tops of 42, which doesn't sound great, but to me, I believe paired up tops can precede a forward move. Second start off the layoff has shown a little bit of early foot in the past was 20 to one on the line as has been living in that eight, nine, 10 to one range. Now is 11 to one taking a little bit of early money floating up as time goes on. So this is a race where I'm um, look, I'm not ashamed to say it. I'll bet two horses to win in here. I'll bet the three <laughs> and the five, 11 to one each. If one of them hits, boom, I'm a right main shade. So that's kind of how I approach these races. I, I'm not just going to automatically look at it and say, you know what? The nine makes plenty of sense in here, Sabuda. You know what? If the horse wins, great. I, I don't need a two to one shot that I've got major questions about. I'll take a shot on a couple of fresher faces, let's say, with the three and the five. Uh, if either of them win, you're going to get about 23 bucks back. I'll take a shot there with those two. So uh, I'm going to bet both of them to win. I was, that, was that made in the shade, by the way? Was that a general reference or was that a Hamilton reference? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, could, it honestly, for my, for my, it could be either. I mean, I, I got the album on my phone. It's, not the it's world. JD, is JD not listening to me? JD, I just said that, yo. You can pop up his comment on the screen because <laughs> people who didn't catch what I said, I said this already. But we do right there, two or three siblings, one day of you. And the one that didn't was a head beaten in second. Okay. Oh, and the other thing, you know how I said there's the nine right now. I was concerned about the nine, Lasix, and now Lasix again just a few days back. He looks in fine condition, so he doesn't look drawn. Sometimes that's the concern because obviously when you use Lasix, you drop the water weight, and then it takes time to you know puff back up and whatnot. The horse looks in very good flesh, so I will say that. I love I love everybody commenting with their selections. Uh, David Leon here uh, agreeing with Matt on the Five Horse Stones River. Another person who agrees with Matt because I see him in the comment section here in the private uh, links uh, is uh, George O. Uh, he says, "Don't leave out Stones River from your exotics. Expecting a much bit better race than last time." Uh, I agree. I just went in uh, and I put a bet down. You can see, get in on the action with first bet. I just bet uh, win place bet on the Five Horse Sto Stones River, and then I boxed them with uh, a couple of the horses that we mentioned earlier, Crash Corrigan, who uh, Ren likes as well. Um, and I threw Cousin Eddie in too. And, and the Lutas. I love that name, Cousin Eddie, because I'm a huge National Lampoon yeah. fan. And Cousin Eddie, like my dad and I, we would laugh and laugh. With the help of the assistant starting team, taking up his position. I, I would I would quote the movie, but I can't, I don't think, on here. It's the internet, I guess. Right. But I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, my gosh. That's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> uh, you got you got family in here, Ren. I think. Oh wow, yes, that is family. That's mom, actually. Mom is in. Um, all right, people still chiming in with their picks. We love it. Keep it coming. Uh, we're gonna do this for all the big Derby prep days at Santa Anita. We'll be back with you here, uh, Santa Anita Road to the Derby live. JT's watch. Um, and then you get a little bonus coverage here. A little bonus coverage. Yeah, kitten to the outside. Nice, nice betting race here to close out the card at Santa Anita today. Yeah, very much so. 
you see, last year we had to do a lot of race calling ourselves, man. Glad yeah. those days are over. <laughs> <laughs> Take Frank any day. And they're off. Sabuda very quick. The Roan Ranger is flashing plenty of speed. And the loot is mine is up to take the lead quicker than both of them. Then it's Robin's Legacy. Stones River is a close-up fifth in some traffic trouble, having to take up in between horses. Ooh. Careless Kitten is on the far outside. JT's Watch is in between horses. Down at the rail, Crash Corrigan. Seahawk Cody has to back out of a little bit of traffic. Then it's Cousin Eddie in a gap of three to Little Mischief. Into the far turn. The loot is mine, much sharper today. Leads three quarters of a leg. Jackie so lost the irons on Little Mischief out of the gate. He's sitting in the saddle for the for his belt. You know, first couple tries out. Robin's legacy in fourth. JT's watches in between horses. Stones River with the red cap as the field turns for home and Sabuda dashes for home. Opens up two and a half in a hurry. The loot is mine is back to second. And then it's a wall of horses battling out miners. Crash Corrigan. Coming through along the inside, JT's watch, the Road Ranger, and all the others left in the wake of Sabuda, who has overwhelmed the competition. Sabuda strolls in by almost five lengths. The loot is mine with second. Crash Moral Corrigan, of the story, the Road Ranger, listen to Ren. <laughs> I just... I, I mean, like I, I mean, I didn't bet the horse because that price was too short for me. And I was again, considering a quick turnaround originally. And as they were heading in the gate by that point, when I realized the horse is in fine flesh anyways, too, I mean, I didn't go in to pop one, you know, a bet. So I, was I was referring to cousin Eddie first and foremost, but oh, oh, yes. that's the horse not being ready. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you, and you crash Corrigan, um, also ran a really nice race. Uh, pretty much the only horse that I saw closing from. Yeah. The so. Well, I, I'm not sure if it was cousin Eddie, but there was some horse there coming down the stretch in, uh, from the outside. It, I think it was cousin Eddie would not change his lead. Would not, uh, would not, would not. Um, obviously wouldn't, wouldn't change anything much other than maybe just a better placing. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? <laughs> Sometimes well, it's too obvious. Well, I hope I hope some of the people watching um, had it. I see a couple of viewers here who had the loot is mine. So hopefully they use the loot is mine with the favorite, um, who was as you could see there the first bet AI pick, which is pretty cool. I didn't know there was an AI option. That is that is awesome. So. Um, <laughs> You use that one with uh, you know a horse that I think we, we all thought had a shot in here and the loot is mine and uh, it ends up being pretty formful. It's, uh, you know we were all you know kind of hoping for a little bit of a long shot, um, you know, which is I think what you should do, especially in you know these you know it, a cowbred fifty thousand dollar claiming race. You, you look for some prices. Umberto was fully, by the way. He's another like really fun personality talking about jockeys. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's so good. Like I, yeah. like, I was like, I thought it's it was timing. It's timing. Yeah, he's good. He's good at everything. <laughs> so. All right. Um, as we've said, this is the first of three live streaming shows here on the road to the Derby at Santa Anita. Um, we hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. If you want to see uh, more of something, less of something, obviously drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, as we do every time we end the show, uh, we give our, our host an opportunity to let you know where you can catch them. Uh, Matt, let's start with you. Uh, where do people catch you when you're not on this show? Podcast is up uh, every Monday or Tuesday throughout the week. The Matt Bernier Show in the Money Media. You can find that in a million different spots wherever you listen to your podcast. But that's that's more or less the big spot there. You can follow me on Twitter at Bernier underscore Matt. But uh, going over this race that we talked about today, the Bob Lewis, as well as the uh, Holy Bull. So, again, it, it's it's one of my favorite times of the year because it's it's all unknown. For all we know, we could have seen complete superstars emerge today and and the horses that'll carry sort of the torch for the next 12 months so um it's it's always that time of year that hope springs eternal you know that's right that was Absolutely. a good thing Brent? So, uh, as for me yeah i am the simulcast host of tampa bay down so you can catch me uh wednesday and then friday saturday sunday because we skip thursday obviously we've got some derby preps coming up sam f davis and then later the tampa bay derby so it's going to be really awesome so you better tune in for that and then also um i host the future stars friday forecast we're currently in the follow-up season so uh, i just check back in with horses who have uh run on that card and what they're up to and uh as um 
I mentioned I talked to Darren Fox yesterday, so you can check my Twitter feed for that because I retweeted it, or you can go to Breeders Cup's Twitter feed and and or their YouTube, and you can check out that interview. We talked about essential quality as well as Vquist because they stand Nyquist, and uh, she represents his freshman crop. We've got two Eclipse champions that they can feel, uh, you know, that deep, uh, uh, you know, attachment toward because they bred and own an essential quality Godolphin. Darley, and then again, Nyquist being the sire of Vquist. She's an encyclopedia, folks. That, 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 that's her Twitter handle right there. You see mine. I'm going to remove this momentarily so that you can see Matt's Twitter handle. Um, always great to follow, but also I know from experience, always great to bounce thoughts off of if you're having quite, you know, whether it's handicapping questions or just kind of curious about something related to pedigree, for example, with Ren, uh, drop them a line. They'll always answer. Um, for now, uh, this is it for tonight. We will Wait, see. I need a disclaimer. I need a disclaimer. If I said oh. anything that offended anybody today, I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> she was just drinking Baileys. <laughs> <laughs> I have some left. Not much. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, uh, finish that up. Finish that up. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We will see you on the next show.